this video is sponsored by me. I want to take just a quick second to tell you about the Hack Smarter Discord community and invite you to join. The Hack Smarter Discord community is a brand new community, and here are some of the things we offer. We have study groups for certifications by TCM Security, Hack the Box, Offsec, and Port Swigger. If you want to be part of an active CTF team, we have a Hack the Box CTF team, as well as a private CTF team that does other competitions. We have weekly goal meetings that we host every single Monday to help you reach your goals. We offer donate what you can one-on-one -on -one coaching where you can meet with an industry expert for a 30-minute session to do a mock interview, resume review, or help you make a road path for your career. And we're also doing giveaways all the time to just give back to the InfoSec community. And finally, if you want to lose at Counter-Strike or Battlefield or Elder Scrolls Online, whatever you want to lose at, I also do some gaming and we'll be hosting some gaming nights. So if you're not part of the Hacksmith or Discord community, would encourage you to join right now. The invite is in the description of this video. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna learn some more AWS pen testing using Pwn Labs. Now, if you've never used Pwn Labs, it is hands down the best platform to learn hands-on cloud pen testing, both blue team and red team. They have labs and you just spin them up sort of like a try hack me or hack the box, but all for the cloud. So they have labs that cover AWS, Azure, and GCP. And I just realized I don't need headphones. So I'm gonna throw my headphones off, but they have labs for all three platforms. And in this video, we're going to learn all about CloudFox. Now, I know some of you have been watching my videos and I've actually been referred to the past couple of days as the cloud streamer because I'm making all of this cloud content. Now, I do want to be clear. I don't just make cloud content. I make all kinds of offensive security infosec content. The reason I'm making so much cloud content right now is it's a personal weakness of mine. So from the beginning, my YouTube channel has been me sharing with you what I am learning and what I'm working on and what I'm learning and what I'm working on right now is getting better at cloud stuff. I've done a handful of AWS pen tests in the real world and just a few Azure pen tests, but I don't have a whole lot of experience with these things. So I'm to the grind sharing while I learn. Let me go ahead and share my screen. We are going to work on this lab right here. Get situational awareness in AWS with CloudFox. And guys, I need to show you something else cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still experimenting with this, but I have access, thanks to my workplace, to uh, GitHub Copilot. Has anyone in chat messed around with GitHub Copilot? I'm literally just learning some of the features of it. And so, like, for example, this is here in Visual, Vir geez, Visual Studio Code. We have GPT built into this. So if I said, hey, create a Python script that does the following, let's just say creates a list of random usernames and appends at hacksmarter.com to the end of them, outputs it to names. Right, so GitHub Copilot here will go ahead and give us the, the full script that we need and then we can just store it into our code. We can also do things like I think this will work if I do control I right here. So same here, we can do control I and ask Copilot to generate code. So let's go ahead and ask that same question here. I know this has nothing to do with cloud stuff, but wanted to show this to you guys because I thought it was amazing, right? So then we can just generate code here. Obviously works for more than just Python. And there is our code with GitHub Copilot. The other thing that I'm excited to give a shot on for the cloud stuff is there's also GitHub Copilot CLI and I made an alias for it. I think I did uh, GitHub, yeah, GitHub Copilot, and you can even see when I was playing around that we can do explain, and we have an AWS command for listing Lambda functions. Let's do AWS command for listing EC2s in the US East 1 region. And there, it's going to give us the exact syntax for doing those things directly in our terminal. So literally just started playing around with this today, was blown away by it. It does cost money. I don't know what it is. Like I said before, my employer paid for it. And this segment is not sponsored in any way by GitHub Copilot. Just thought it was cool. And I wanted to use it and experiment with it while we're on stream. But here we go. Let's go ahead and get started with our lab. The most important part of our lab is taking good notes. And I've been experimenting with taking my notes 
in uh, Notion. You can see if you've been here before, I seem to change my note-taking platform every other month. But let's go ahead and add a page inside here, and we'll just call it Get Situation Awareness with CloudFox. And inside of this one, we'll go ahead and start adding our information. I don't know if I'll need subpages, but let's go ahead and do our credentials first. And we'll jump over to here and grab our credentials. I actually want to pull this out here just so I can alt-tab a little bit easier. There we go. So we, of course, have our access key. We'll drop that and we'll drop our secret. Now, if you're new to AWS, I'll explain what this is once we start working with it. But for now, let's just get our notes set up and then I will slow down and explain some of what you are seeing. Let's go and see what exactly we are doing right now in our scenario. So in a red team engagement for our client, Huge Logistics, you scanned their GitHub repositories for secrets using Trufflehog and found AWS keys committed to a .n file, environment file, which is actually pretty common. Your mission is to see what this key gives you and see how far you can go. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll just say uh, scope slash scenario. And we'll paste that in there. The only thing I wish, I wish there was a hotkey to do these headers, and maybe there isn't. I just don't know what it is. But we'll add our scope and scenario there. And let's jump back over to here. The cool thing about Pwn Labs is you kind of have two ways to approach some of these labs. This one says it's suitable for a CTF approach, so we can go into it blind, which is what I'm going to attempt to do, but we might fail and look at the walkthrough. But you can also have a full walkthrough for every single lab. So if you're brand new, they will walk you through the entire lab. But what I like to do before I look at the walkthrough is use the learning outcomes kind of as a rough guide on what we need to do. This will give us an idea, hey, here is our attack path. Here is what we need to figure out. So let me go ahead and copy that and we'll jump back over to notion and we'll just say learning goals maybe jump that to h2 oh shoot tina's coming in with the pro tip he said forward slash gives you all notion commands then type header How can I, hold up, can I, uh, here, let me, can I just type header two and enter? Oh, okay. I'll have to play around with that. I don't get the little arrow thing, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm attempting to do. But here we go, we have our learning goals and we know we have some credentials here and we need to use CloudFox, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So what we actually need to do is first load these keys into our AWS environment and we'll set up a profile. Now, if you're new to AWS, other thing I wanna do real quick is I like to use the full width of the page. But if you are new to AWS, the access key is sort of like a username and the secret is sort of like a password. The access key isn't necessarily private information, but the secret is. You don't wanna share your secret with other people because they can authenticate to your AWS account with that information. So let's go ahead and first get, copy our access key right here. And we'll open up our terminal. Let's go ahead and just call this terminal and we'll CD over to Pwn Labs. We'll make a directory for CloudFox is what we'll call it. And here we go in CloudFox. And now we're gonna do AWS configure. You can see it from previous labs, profile, and we'll just call this one CloudFox. We need to go ahead and give it our access key ID. So we will do that there. And it's gonna prompt for our secret key. So we will grab our secret key, copy that and go here and then default region. You can do really any one that you want. I always just do US East one by default because I notice a lot of resources are often hanging out there. The rest we can just enter through. And now in Linux, you can do a who am I command to figure out who you are. But AWS wants to overcomplicate the process. So we need to do AWS STS get caller identity give it our profile of CloudFox that we just set up just to make sure it's working. Now we are connected as user Sarah. I'm curious, let's play around with GitHub Copilot. So GitHub Copilot explain, and we'll say AWS command for who am I? Whoops, in the environment. Will this give us the right command? 
Yep, so there it is. It, if you didn't know that and you, you're using GitHub Copilot in the CLI, you could also figure it out that way. You can see it gave us the correct command, AWS STS Git Caller Identity. Let me go ahead and open up my screenshot tool as well. I use LightShot. I know a lot of people ask that question. I use LightShot for doing screenshots, but let me go ahead and grab that and let's begin taking some of our notes here. We'll copy this. Actually, you know what? Let's not even do screenshots. Notion has a pretty good code view, and so we can actually do code. So we'll do, we'll just add like a, there, that works, sweet. Well, if I do code like that and paste that in that way. And no, that's not J JavaScript, my friend. That is bash. And we'll say, hey, there's our who am I command. That is who we are. We are this user, Sarah. I need a drink of water. Lots of talking. Tinas, do you use Notion? I know you're using Cherry Tree before, which is what I was using, but I just started using Notion, just used it on my first assessment this week, like in the real world, and really enjoyed Notion. Just for uh, note taking. But uh, let's jump back to, well, we have this. So we, we know who our user is. And if we look at our learning goals, it says we need to use CloudFox to get situational awareness in AWS. So what we need to do is let's read about CloudFox, shall we? Whoops, that's not what I wanted to go to. Let's just go to CloudFox and GitHub. and read the docs first let's just get it installed and then we'll read through the docs i don't know if it'll take a while to install i think i have go installed oh we also have binary releases let's just do that that might be easiest and we need linux amd 64 so we'll go ahead and download that and is it downloading? Okay, so we'll CP home Tyler downloads here. And we will, well, let's just make a directory for CloudFox so I don't make that folder messy in case there's a bunch of stuff in here. Oh, there's not, okay. Beautiful, now if we echo our path what I wanna do is let's add this to our path and the easy way we can do that if you don't know what your path is, if you do this command that I just ran, that's my path. And what Linux is gonna do is look in each one of these directories to see, hey, is this file here to execute? So you don't have to specify the full location. A standard location is user local bin. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll do sudo, so super user do. We'll do mv to move. We're gonna move the CloudFox binary to user local bin like that type in our password and now if we back out to here and we use CloudFox now we can use it anywhere that we are at so we have CloudFox loaded up now let's go ahead and read the docs it's of course tempting just to dive into things but I bet there is a wiki we of course have a quick start here and do we have a wiki for things so CloudFox helps us gain situational awareness in unfamiliar cloud environments. It's an open source command line tool. I'll zoom in so you guys can see it. Created to help penetration testers and other offensive security professionals find exploitable attack paths in cloud infrastructure. CloudFox helps you answer the following common questions and many more. What regions is the AWS account using and how many resources are in the account? What secrets are lurking, which is gonna be helpful. What workloads have administrative permissions? What actions permissions does this principle have? That's kind of like our user. What role trusts are overly permissive or allow cross account assumption? What endpoints host names or IP is gonna attack from an external starting point, so public internet? What endpoints host names IP is gonna attack from an internal starting point, so to assume breach in like a pen test? And what file systems can I potentially mount from a compromised resource inside the VPC? So we have a few blogs. Do we have, so it's modular. We can do AWS all checks that will check everything. We could do that, but I wanna, I wanna do it a little bit smaller so we understand what's going on. Hey, documentation, here's what I'm looking for. Let's, uh, let's actually just check out the documentation. AWS commands.
missing chat. What's chat going on? Tina says cherry tree for day job, notion for night job. I like notion, but sometimes it gets a bit clunky. X said I'm currently transitioning to Obsidian as my note taking app because of security issues, I guess. Sure, makes sense. It's less important, you know, what note taking thing you use and just take notes. Abeo says he likes how everything syncs, which of course is a security concern, right? Like anytime you're there's data in a third party, you're taking a security risk. Kelvin said, I think you should use Tmux or Split Terminal than clearing those work in progress. Sorry, Kelvin. I always forget that people are following along and I clear my screen. I'll stop doing that. Or I'll try to. It's a bad habit. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good chat. I have not used databases in Notion yet, default suck. All right, let's understand what is going on here. So we have all checks, which I don't really want to do. That will just check everything, but I have a feeling that might take a while. Let's take it a little bit slower. This command max all active access key IDs for all users in AWS account. You got an access key and you want to see if it belongs to any of your InScope accounts. Look for the access key and the list of keys associated with this account and any other InScope accounts. Use the access key. How does that work? So if we do CloudFox, AWS, so just called access keys. Oh, cool. So this gives us information on the access keys that are available. So we have three different users. We have a AWS management user. Uh, logic track and Sarah, and that's who we have access to. Let's go and just grab the output of this. That that was a pretty cool command, I'd, I'd say. Even if we don't need that for it, uh, the purpose of labs, y'all, is to learn, right? So even if I'm taking this step further than the lab needs to go, that's good, right? Because we're learning things in the process. So there we're checking our access keys. We have those three users. Let's jump back to the docs and read some more and try out some of these other modules. We can look up a specific access key. We don't really do that now. List the buckets in the account and gives you a handy command for inspecting them further. All right. No buckets found. I may not even have permission to see the buckets. Cloud formation. You know, I'm curious. It said like it said we could do inventory. That I think that might be the best place to start. Like what is in our AWS account? Jeez. Inventory. Subset. A rough idea of what regions are used, which popular services are used. Let's try this first because I think that might make the most sense. So if I do CloudFox AWS inventory profile CloudFox, what does this look like? Looks like it might take a little bit of time. We'll let it run. Hey, while it runs, we'll check this out. chat leak code and chill said is there a service that gives you virtual machines local labs instead of cloud ones yeah you got the classic vol vol hub right that's what vol hub does am i correct i actually used vol hub a lot back when i was getting started Yeah, this is what you're looking for, Leak Code and Chill. You can download these VMs and run them locally from a virtual machine and then attack them. The really nice thing about VulnHub is because they're being hosted locally, scanning and attacks go super fast compared to like attacking it on Try Hack Me or Hack the Box or Pwn Labs. Hopefully you find that helpful. Okay. Well, this is cool. So we ran our inventory command and we have a total of 16 resources. They're all in US West too. So I want to keep that in mind. We have three access keys, eight roles, five users. We have one Lambda function, one secret manager secrets and 
and two SSM parameters. Okay, awesome. Let's grab this information. I want to include my syntax there for my notes. And let's go ahead and add that over to Notion. Right, so then what we want to do is probably enumerate each one of these. So we've already done access keys. We can do roles and users, but what stands out to me is let's just begin with uh, Lambda functions. And let's see what tasks or what tools we have in, where, oh, was it this one? In this CloudFox thing for Lambda. All right, list Lambda functions in the account, including which ones have admin roles attached, also gives you handy commands for downloading each function. Oh, does it find secrets for us as well? Is there, here, is there a secret one? Secrets, oh, look at that. Oh, that's secrets manager, which we need. All right, let's, let, we'll do that. Let's do Lambda first. Okay, I saw, I'm just, I, it's just Lambda. Super easy to remember. CloudFox, AWS, Lambda, Profile, CloudFox. Sweet. So we have this Lambda role here, which with Lambda, if it's things aren't stored securely, which I see this in the real world all the time, you can often find credentials, keys and stuff being stored in Lambda in um, clear text. So let's go ahead and drop this here. Just so we're including all of our information. And now it says we have this output. We have Lambda stuff. Here's what's interesting. It said in the docs that it will even give you the command to get the Lambda function. So if I copy this and I cat that out, the profile used is most likely not the profile used around CloudFox, which means we may not have access. But look at this. It gives us the exact command for doing this. Download function code to disk. Let's just run this first command. So we'll do AWS profile cloud Fox region US West two. Of course, we can copy and paste it. But I always like to type it for muscle memory. We're passing it the function name of logic track dev. And remember, one of our users that we discovered was named logic track. So I wonder if the logic track user is connected to this function. So we see a few things here. One is very badly misconfigured, but we have some variables being stored here. We have an S3 bucket. We have another secret access key. We have a Dynamo table name and we have an access key ID. Let's go ahead and grab this information and we'll drop it in our notes. You know, we could just add it to this code right here. Just we'll keep some of our Lambda stuff the same. So there, that's some interesting information that we will for sure want to come back to. The other thing we want to do, make sure I'm not missing anything else here, is this URL will allow us to download the actual Lambda code. And uh, in Lambda code, like I said before, if things aren't stored securely, you might be able to find secrets, credentials, and things like that. So let's go ahead. We can literally just go like this. And you can see it downloads. And we'll make a directory for Lambda code and we'll copy from home, Tyler downloads. I don't know what that function was called. Logic track. And it's a Python app. We could use our Visual Studio code here and open it up. There's CloudFox, right? Lambda code. And we have our lambda function.py. So it has to do with that Dymino DB database that we saw. And we do have some credentials being stored, hard coded credentials being stored here instead of as a variable from Secrets Manager. And then we have another function which doesn't look like it's been implemented. 
to upload a file, which it must be grabbing or trying to when it's implemented, grabbing that access key in secret that we saw in the environmental variables in the Lambda function. But if we're doing a pen test, here's another finding. We have this API key and this endpoint in this payload being stored in clear text. This one I will grab a screenshot of. We'll just highlight it like this and we'll say, yo, no, no, don't do that. Um, the frick. Where, where's my notes at? <laughs> Here they are. I'm pretty sure I copied that. Let me just grab another screenshot of this real quick. Oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm because I'm on my host machine when I'm taking that screenshot, it's trying to jump out to my host machine. Why can't it paste? What the heck? Am I crazy? Copy. All right. We'll jump back to this. Paste. What? Is it something weird that it doesn't want to take it from my host machine and put it in Notion. Odd. Uh, don't think this is a Notion issue. It's a weird VM issue, but that's fine. We'll just copy the actual code, I guess. All right, good enough for me. That works. We at least have the API key and the endpoint, and we found that in that Lambda function. And here is what seems interesting to me, really interesting, the fact that we have an access key, key ID, and a secret. We can actually set up another AWS profile with this information and continue some of our enumeration. But before we do that, let me, let me actually add that as a note so I don't forget. Because we also had some secret manager stuff here and I wanted to run that command as well. So if we do CloudFox um, AWS secrets, I think is what it was, profile CloudFox. Let's see if this does anything. Drink of water. Oh, wow. We have some AWS root account credentials and we have SSM uh, secrets being stored here. Do we actually have access to it as well? So we can pull, pull secret commands here. So if we copy, not copy, cat this out, it gives us actually the syntax that we need to do here. All right, let's just do, um, you know, we'll, we'll grab this command. Should I type it? Yeah, I guess I'll type it once again for muscle memory. CloudFox, let's understand what's going on here, especially for those of you who might be new to AWS. Profile, I think we already understand we're setting our profile based on the user we want to use. The region in AWS, most resources are tied to our region. The exceptions are things like S3 buckets and, and IM users. But for this, we are tied to the region of US West 2, so we have to specify that. And then we're getting the secret from Secrets Manager. So that's the resource, which is why we're doing that. And we're running this command get secret value, which it might fail. Maybe we won't have permissions. And then we just want to pass it the secret ID, which is what it found before. This root account is the secret ID. So let's see if that works. And it does, look at that. We have a secret string right here, keep me safe. So let's go ahead and grab this. We'll jump back over to here and we'll say enumerating secrets manager. So we have that. And let's see the other ones that we had. We'll type it out again, AWS profile. We want to pass it CloudFox, same thing before, US West 2, SSM get parameter this time. So that's a difference with decryption, otherwise it's going to be encrypted. And then we're passing it the name application WProd3 admin. So an admin user, getting the name of the admin user, 
So that value is web admin. And then we want to go ahead and get the password. And the value of that is keep hackers out. So we have more credentials being stored in clear text that might come handy as we continue to work through this lab. We'll go ahead and paste that information in here and we at least have all of our credentials collected. Now what I wanna do is enumerate some more, but using this secret, because what's interesting about this secret that we found in this environmental variable is we have our access key ID and we're access key ID in our secret. We have a DynamoDB table that seems to be attached to it and we also have an s3 bucket that might be storing interesting information for us so what i want to do is maybe just copy this here and we'll paste it here just to keep things clear this access key secret All right, so that's the information that we're enumerating from just to keep our notes clear. So let's go back to our terminal and we're gonna set up another profile here in AWS. We're gonna do that with AWS configure, pass it our profile. I'm just gonna call it CloudFox2. You can call it whatever you want if you're following along. And let's go ahead and grab this access key ID right here. Copy, paste, once the secret. We'll grab the secret next, copy, paste and default region. Remember we're in US West two for a lot of these resources. So I'm going to set to US West two and then see if that goes through. We can check if it worked by doing the classic who am I command, but in the long confusing way of AWS by AWS STS get caller identity. We're going to pass it our profile. We just set up a cloud Fox two and we are logged in as user logic track and I need a drink of water. Let me copy this information and we will drop that to our notes. There we go. Hi cat, can you guys hear my cat? He's meowing at us today. Wealthy Mindset said, how are you man? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. I would have stored them API keys as environmental variables. CJ said, what are we hacking today? We are doing some AWS hacking and my cat wants to say hello to everyone. So here, y'all can say hello to my hacking cat. Thing is huge, y'all. Look at him. If you hear me owing, it's not me, it's the cat. Also, I realize I wear a black sweatshirt and often when I pet my cat, it looks like I'm petting the air, but there really is a real cat here. We just both wear black all the time. Uh, Knox Lumen said, stopping by before bed, finish recording a video on OSCP TJ Nose Prep. Started because I saw you putting yourself out there. Maybe one day I'll get to have you on like you did, John. Dude, let's go. Yeah, it would be an honor. We'd love to. Have a good night, my friend. All right, let's go back to some of our enumeration here. So we have access to this user. My question is, let's go back to this Lambda function. Actually, I think I have the code here in. No, what I wanna see is the actual output that we got. This is why good notes are good. Enumerating Lambda functions. I wanna see the rest of this environment information. We have this role here. Okay, so hang with me here. Here's my logic in some ways. We have a user called logic track and this Lambda function has a role called Lambda execution role. With AWS, when you have an IAM user, you can sometimes assume a role. And it seems that they might be telling us, hey, sorry, my cat's biting me, he's getting off all that. They might be telling us, hey, this user and these roles, this role is related. But before we do that, we also have this Dynamo DB table. So I'm curious, can our logic user access this table themselves? Do we need to assume a role to do so? We also have this, this uh, S3 bucket. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first check out this S3 bucket and see what information might be there. The way we can do that is by doing AWS S3 LS for list S3 again, and then we wanna grab, pass it that bucket name, which is this right here, H1 file uploads. We'll copy that information, drop it here, 
give it our profile cloud fox 2 that's right right oh sweet so we do have some information here data project all right, we have a huge PDF, Tableau server windows.pdf. I'm not going to download that real pen test. I would, but this sure looks interesting. We have Rio at hugelogistics.com credentials.csv. Don't mind if I do, my friend. We're going to go ahead and grab uh, Rio's credentials and see what interesting information might be in here. We'll do that. I'm going to use a dot here. The purpose of this dot is saying, hey, just copy the file to my current directory. And the other thing we need to change about our command is instead of ls for list, we want to change this to cp for copy. We want to copy this file to our local directory. And if we ls, we can just cat out Rio. And we do have, geez, we have the console and everything. We have a username. We have a password. And we have a council sign in. So let's go ahead and copy all of that. Make sure we come back to that. We'll scroll down here. Whoops, I want to do code. That's definitely uh, interesting information here. And I'm even going to maybe separate this out a little bit just for clarity's sake, even though I know it's a code command there that works for me we have his username we have his password and we have the council sign in url does that actually work what up rio you actually can give us access to your account dude Okay, maybe not, but we'll keep it. Maybe there's some credential reuse that will come up later. Max, he said, hey, is this lab from Pwn Labs? It is from Pwn Labs. It is the situational awareness of CloudFox Lab. Will it be uploaded later to YouTube? Absolutely. You'll probably see this lab uploaded early next week. It would be my guess. Maybe later this week, but yeah, you'll see it uploaded soon. All right, let's jump back to our notes. What do we have here? We have our S3 bucket. And the other thing I wanted to do was see if we could assume this. No, first I want to see, can I actually hit this Dynamo DB table? So let's copy that. I don't know the syntax. So let's say, hey, GitHub, uh, GitHub Copilot, blame AWS command to list info from this Dynamo DB. Get away. There, I think that's, see if this works. The AWS command to list information from a Dynamo DB table called DB logic track is AWS Dino, Dynamo DB, Dynamo DB scan table name DB logic track profile cloud fox 2. all right so our user logic track is not authorized to perform that scan so then the question is how about this role that's attached to this like logic track dev uh lambda function can we can this role do it and if so can we assume the role but i don't know the syntax for that either so github cow Copilot explain. Edibus command to assume this role. Okay. AWS STS assume role. We're going to give it the role ARN, which, yeah, all this looks good. I'm going to, I'm actually going to copy this. We're going to change the role session name. We'll just call it, I mean, this can be literally anything you want. Hack smarter would be fine. And we need to pass it, of course, our profile of cloud Fox too. And fingers crossed that maybe this allows us to do something. Boom. And it does. 
Beautiful. So we can assume that role. And this kind of gives us another account that we can begin enumerating for data from. Let me go ahead and save this information though to our notes. Okay, that all looks good. And now what we need to do is in our terminal here, we need to set up another profile, but we're gonna use this role as our profile. So what we're gonna do is AWS configure profile. I'm just gonna call it CloudFox3 as we do our CloudFox lab, but that can be anything you wanna call it. We will grab the access key ID right there and we will call the secret access key and West too, because that's where all the resources are. But we also need to set this session token, which I think you can, I always edit my credentials file, AWS credentials file. I think you can do this from the terminal with like AWS configure, is it AWS configure set? I don't know what it is. So let's do this. Um, There we go. AWS configure set AWS session token, and we're gonna give it the value right here. We'll copy this like that. And it's the for the profile CloudFox3. And now we'll do AWS STS get caller identity, and let's see if I did everything correctly. Okay. We were able to assume that role. I called it Hack Smarter. Once again, that name can be anything you want, but we have assumed if we go back to our Lambda function, when we are enumerating the Lambda function, we saw that we had this role as attached to it and our logic track user had permissions to assume this role. And we know that this Lambda function, just based on looking at the environment, is interacting with a Dynamo DB table called DB logic track. Now we can run the command we ran previously. I think that, was it scan or something? Dynamo DB scan. Instead of profile CloudFox2, let's do CloudFox3 and see if we are able to dump the information that might be in this table. So fingers crossed. And it does. What do we have? Origin, London, and transit, delivery, shipment. Flag! Look at that. And ladies and gentlemen, we have completed the lab. That was a lot of fun. I don't know about you guys. I had a lot of fun doing that. Let's paste in our flag. And there we go. But the lab is not done yet because I always like to read through the walkthrough, see interesting things I miss, alternative ways of doing things. So let's go ahead and dive into the walkthrough and understand a little bit better about what is going on. So real world context. Getting situational awareness is an important step when assessing the security of an unfamiliar cloud environment. While pen testers and red teamers will do this on engagements, it's also a good exercise for blue and purple teamers to undertake periodically, as the shifting permissions environment of the cloud can unintentionally expose secrets and open up unintended paths for resources and data access. That it can. So I'm just going to skim through this. All stuff that we did. They use Go to build it. We just downloaded the binary. It works. They did inventory just like we did. We did access keys too, which was, that was cool. Like the access keys command. If we go back up in my own notes, right? How, how did I do it? So I did access keys first, which told me there was this logic track user. We also have this AWS management user. Then I did inventory and then we checked Lambda functions. All right. Yeah, so AWS Land Rover is an instance named Logic Truck Dev. Secrets. And we found this all by reading the docs, y'all. So maybe that's that's one takeaway is I just pulled up CloudFox, looked through the wiki, and figured out how to use the tool. So when people say read the docs, it always seems like, yo, overwhelming. It really isn't. Just slow down. Take your time. Don't rush through the lab. Read through documentation. The goal, anytime you do a lab, Pwn Labs, try hack me, hack the box, name your platform. The goal is not to finish the lab super quick. The goal is to learn something in the process. So I always encourage people slow down, understand what's going on, read the documentation. But yeah, we found all of this information.
it's cool that it gave us the commands to pull it. Cloud, Cloud Fox is really neat. That was fun to use. We have the web admin stuff. We have the corresponding password. What's this? Knowing there's a Lambda instance, something that's worth checking is any environment. Oh, shoot. We could have just checked that with Cloud Fox. What? All right. I want to do that. Let's see what this does. Come on, finish the last one. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have checked environmental variables and it would give us the S3 bucket, the access key ID, the dynamo table name, the lot. That's, that's so cool. I'm copying that to my notes. That, that's really cool. There's a Dynamo DB table. Yep. Yep, I did all that. We downloaded the code. We're supposed to use that for anything? Oh, an internal API. Yep, so we, we spotted all that ourselves. Good work, team. We're not able to list animal DB tables or retrieve contents as our current user, Sarah. We don't have permission to assume the I am role. Yeah, but we found those creds right away. I must have found, I found the creds in a different order. Oh, here's logic track. So they grabbed the creds, they became logic track. They downloaded those credentials there. Do they log into anything though? Like it seemed like you could actually log into the council, but maybe that was just part of the lab showing, hey, credentials being leaked or hard coded. Yeah, so then they just assumed the logic trick role, which we did. And, oh, apart from Dynamo, you can scan and get the, so like they don't even tell you the final flag. That's kind of cool. I like that. They don't give you the final flag. They make you work for it a little bit, which you could figure this out, right? Like I just asked uh, GitHub Copilot in the CLI and they're able to help me with it. And then the further reading is cloud foxable stuff. But hey, y'all, this is the end of the Git situational awareness in AWS with Cloud Fox Lab on Pwn Labs. Really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Hope you learned something like I did. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.